Okay, so. <laughs> so, do you guys want to start with the bottom up or the top down? Do you want to be heartbroken first? Or... <laughs> oh, people are going to get so mad. They're going to get so mad. <laughs> oh, they're going to get so mad, man. But it's the truth. Okay, so. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Avenger 1 3.23 Master Modes tier list. No, I don't want to play with you. Zippy time. Um, okay, so just to preface everyone, uh, so that everyone understands what I'm talking about when I say, this is my opinion. Okay? That's all it is. It's my opinion based on the experiences I've had with Master Modes and the amount of time I've been playing and blah, 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 whatever, right? Um, I just would also like to say that uh, there are iconographies on the tier list here that'll make a little more sense to you as I explain it. So, number one... In the top left-hand corner of every ship that you see here on the tier list, there is a color associated to the amount of pilot skill to get the most out of the platform. So, green is rookie, right? So someone, or beginner, sorry, someone who just stepped into the game that's like, you, you pretty much can get the most out of it right away. Yellow is like, you got to have some basic awareness of how the game systems work and, you know, consider yourself a rookie. And then you have orange, which is um, uh, trained. So, like, you know how to fly. You know what, like, what to do. You know what all the buttons do. Like, you're you're, you're experienced. You know. And then red is expert. So you you know all the fundamentals. You're very good at it. You know you train. You're 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 a competent um, pilot. You know you got your controls all set up. Like I shouldn't have to explain to you how to fly a ship like you should know. So to be an expert pilot is me, I would consider someone who's been flying for a few months and has been training every day and you know is very aware of what they're doing right and wrong, maybe watches some videos on YouTube from a guy called A1, I don't know, something like that. And then there's a score. Now the score on the bottom, to, hold on, don't freak out, okay, is the TCS score, right? Threat, control, survivability. Okay, TCS on a scale of zero to 10. Okay, so for example, the Ares Ion has a nine, which is the T, so threat, a nine out of 10 on the threat score, which means the Ares Ion is a very high threat, which means it's got a big cannon, it has a lot of damage. You cannot just ignore that there's an Ares Ion that's within range of you engaging you. So you have to, it's a very, very, very threatening ship. Okay. It has a two on control, which means it's got low G's, its turn rate's kind of shitty. You know, in the actual dogfight itself, it's able to negotiate positions. It's only got a two out of 10. So it's very easy to get around. It's very easy to negotiate what your position is relative to him or her. You know, so it's not exactly going to fly in behind you and, and dome you, right? But you have to be aware that you have to respect the threat that's coming from the Ares Ion and that size 7 gun, okay? And then 5 on survivability. Survivability means a combination of, you know, during... Because, again, I've flown all these ships, and this is all, again, just my personal opinion, right? But the survivability on a ship like an Ares Ion is around 5. So it's, it's shields are okay... You know, it's it's not really that tough. Like you can shoot it a couple times and it's dead. You know, um, the physical size of the ship is really you know not lending itself well to any kind of combat situation because what ends up happening is the ship is just constantly getting pelted because it's just so bloody big, right? So its TCS score is nine two five, right? So. Everyone understand what the TCS score is? Threat, control, survivability, you know, and uh, because, again, it, it's, a, it's a lot of things mashed together in the sense that threat is, you know, weapon size, number of guns, capacitor, all kind of condensed into one so that I, as the instructor, can kind of say, like, look, you know, on a scale of 1 to 10, you know, your damage, weapons, this kind of stuff, you know, it's, it's going to be a high threat. So, uh, <laughs> the origin... Oh, this poor little thing. I mean, I guess we're not really surprised, and I guess technically it shouldn't have made it into the tier list at all, but I just kind of want to give people a little baseline here. I mean, this poor thing 
is almost as fast as some light fighters uh basically dies at the first sign of trouble doesn't really have an insanely great turn rate low capacitor you know uh great ex not really great acceleration i mean these things are like i call them little uh pee poppers where you just you know you turn on it you shoot it once it's just gone right um so if you're bringing the x you know if you're bringing the x uh the origin x what was this thing called again x85 sorry yeah, you can tell how much I care about this thing. <laughs> the, the silly two-seater, yeah. I mean, it's probably a better shuttle than it is an actual combat ship, which I guess is the whole point of the ship, you know? So, don't expect much. Two on threat. It's got four little size one guns that don't do much, and it's not really that threatening. Its capacitor isn't great. So, again, it's a two on its threat, which means it's not a huge threat. But, you know, so if you've got to choose between engaging in Ares Ion or engaging in, you know, an X-85... Uh, or 85x you're probably going to want to kill the Ares ion first you know or control the fight so that it's no longer a threat again control the fight so it's no longer a threat and then take out the 85x because the 85x still has a little bit of control it's got some good acceleration ish compared to everything else so and then two on survivability i mean you look at this thing the wrong way and it's dead so and then we have the a1 spirit bomber and just so everyone knows, I'm, I do these ships based on family. So before everyone says, oh, the Ares Ion, blah, 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 where's the Inferno? Relax, stop posting on Spectrum. A1 sucks. Just understand that the Ares Ion out of the two is the better of the two. Okay? So if you're going to pick an Ares Starfighter at all, you want to pick the Ion. And if you want to pick the Inferno, just know that it's the less effective version of the two ships to pick same thing with the hornets you'll see as we go on right because uh, we do this based on ship family right so the Ares inferno just to be clear is not as effective as the Ares ion in pvp situations right that doesn't mean that you don't want to use it it just means that if you had to choose between the two you're probably going to choose an ion right um a1 spirit bomber again out of the spirits that we have the A1 Spirit Bomber is definitely the better choice in terms of which one you want to use for combat. Although it's still an F tier fighter slash combat ship because even though it has a six for threat, so it's got a decent amount of forward firepower, it's got three of control. It's only a little bit better at controlling its fight than the Ares Infernos or Ions. So it basically is not a real threat to you. So if it does get behind you, right? It's not a big problem. Just, you know, just you know control the fight to the position that you want to be in and get behind it and shoot the piss out of it right so it's just i mean i have flown these things and uh, it's a real shame that a ship carrying the name a1 is so bad at combat uh and then you have the eclipse which um i mean we should be pretty honest here it's a two now hold on before everyone freaks out oh my god a1 but it size nine torpedoes ah! relax okay it's two size two guns. Now, I understand it has size nine torpedoes, okay? But they're not hitting fighters, okay? Thank God, they're not hitting fighters. Um, if you're in a hammerhead and you see an eclipse, yeah, probably a level nine or 10 on threat level. But again, this is in relation to the fighters amongst each other, right? So yes, it has size nine torpedoes, but I mean, if you're getting hit by size nine torpedoes in an arrow or a buccaneer, that's not supposed to happen. Okay. Um, yes, flip the table. Um, and then six on survivability, because it's actually quite tough. Like, it's actually, surprisingly, it has a decent amount of hit points, um, and it's quite small, and it's actually hard to target, so it's got a decent uh, stealth score. So I put it six out of ten on survivability, because, again, survivability encompasses, you know, the chance that you are to get picked up in a fight, you know, you're, you know just overall engaging in lots of PvP encounters like I do. You know, I find that the Eclipse can survive those encounters, but, you know, by being hard to target, small and relatively tough. You know, you've got people with you, all that stuff. But in general, um, you know, it's still an E tier ship because, well, reasons. Now, I know we skipped F tier, but I just wanted to show you guys. <laughs> <laughs> So before everyone freaks out and starts trying to cancel me for the 1400th time, um, please understand where I'm coming from. Now, I've flown all these ships, so don't panic and be like, well, I, I, think I flew my Sulin and... Okay, I get it, right? But 
don't forget to, you know, it's it's orange on pilot skill, which means you have to be trained, like genuinely trained and know what you're doing to even have a chance at, you know, combat. And then even if you're a good pilot, still, still you're F tier. <laughs> it's easy to hit. It has no hit points. It's hard to take off with for no reason. You know, its guns are the only thing good about it, you know, but its level of control, again, 5, 4, 3. It's 5 for threat, 4 for control because it can't control shit, and it's got 3 for survivability because it's just a giant paperweight waiting to get shot at, you know? I mean, you put a new bro or a new pilot or a new person, star citizen, in a Sulin, you're just committing them to death in 323. So it's dumpster tier. And then my heart was so broken when I started flying the Pisces again. Of all ships that Anvil has, the Pisces isn't interceptor tuned. I will never understand. I will never understand this. It's a shuttle. It's meant to fly fast and be safe, and yet it can't do that. And it's also even less hit points than the 85X, it feels like. I mean, you die so fast and less acceleration. It's a murder box. Like, you just, it's, it's a coffin. It's a coffin. It's a coffin. Two for threat because it can't hit shit. It's not really a threat at all. You know, if you got a Pisces on you, ooh, you know, four for control because it has slightly more acceleration than something like a, an, Ar an Aries Ion, and it's it's physically smaller, so it somehow you know somewhat can control the range. And then it's got one for survivability because it's I almost gave it a zero because it basically dies at the first sign of trouble. So I mean, if you're in a Pisces, guys, stay away from anything and stay in nav mode for God's sake. Do never 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 drop into scm and start engaging <laughs> just don't do it okay so moving up to d tier we have a heartbreaking display of anvil ships it's funny i find anvil ships they used to be so good in the previous builds like arrow was like s tier a tier and hurricane was super good and now now we see the results of of your feedback <laughs> So um, we have the Anvil Hurricane, again, eight for threat, so very dangerous. You know, if you do happen to loiter in front of its guns, you have to respect the amount of damage output that this thing can put out. So it's an eight on threat. So it's a big threat if you find yourself in front of a Hurricane at 500 meters. But it's got three for control because its speed is hilariously low. Its afterburner is not very much better. Its acceleration isn't very good, and its turn rate's terrible. It's literally just a... F and it, it has, like, almost no hit points. So, you're a glass cannon that can't move, can't fight, can't turn, can't run. <laughs> Anvil. <laughs> and then, you know, four for survivability, like I, like I said. So, and then we have the Anvil Gladiator, which I had high hopes for. I really had high hopes for the Gladiator. Um, I was really disappointed when I started flying it. I'm just like, wow, you know, it's got okay survivability. Like it's somewhat durable. It takes a lot more hits than the hurricane. But again, with only two size threes for the pilot, you know, or two size threes for the gunner. So you only got four size threes, you know, but you need two people to run it. Um, you know, low acceleration, low top speed, low SCM, just, you know, it basically can't avoid anything. So it just dies. Horrible, painful death. Uh, and then you have the Cuddy Blue, which uh, I'm actually quite, I'm actually not surprised that it's here now. The Cuddy Blue was busted in the, the last patch with 30 something Gs for VTOL Funny, which <laughs> just some people know. The VTOL Funny glitch has still not been fixed for the Buccaneer. Sorry, for the, uh, for the Cutlass. But instead of getting 30 Gs, you get 16 Gs. So it's still lower than most interceptors, interceptors just naturally. So even though you can still switch into VTOL mode and get a little bit more acceleration out of your ship and all that stuff, that's why I made it a little more difficult to fly. You have to be you know, at least aware of what VTOL mode is and have a little bit of experience with like, putting power into your turn rate and that kind of stuff. Because if you don't, you're going to die. So an absolute beginner in a Drake Cutlass, um, probably not going to do too great you're probably going to need a little bit more experience before you fly it even even to get the most out of it but again even if you're an experienced pilot 
um, you're still going to be fighting in D tier, right? So just be aware that there's plenty of ships that are much better than you. Um, and also, this is based on the family. So the Cuddy Blue is the best of the Drake Cutlass family. The Drake Cuddy Black is just a worse version of the Cuddy Blue. And the Drake Cuddy Red is a worse version of the Cuddy Black in terms of its combat capabilities. Now, that doesn't mean that you don't want to bring a Cuddy Red to respawn, okay? I'm just saying, if you're going to pick any of those platforms to fight with, Cuddy Blue would be the best one. Uh, then you have the Stantok Yikes. Because <laughs> that's exactly what it is. <laughs> oh, boys. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a fat, large, immovable turret. That's what it is. It's a turret. It is literally a turret with fins. That's all it is. You know, it's got some decent threat. It's got a 6 out of 10, you know, so it can shoot stuff with its four size threes, but it's got no control over their fight. It's physically quite large and um, it's not really that durable compared to how big it is. So it just gets absolutely bodied. Uh, then you have the Mustang Alpha, the dedicated dogfighter starter ship. And then you have the Aurora, which basically is the same thing. But I mean, I mean, the Aurora doesn't pretend to be a dogfighter and yet it's still just as good as the Mustang Alpha, which should tell you something. And considering it was like a legitimately B tier combat ship in the previous patch to see it go from b tier because you could actually flex on people in the previous patch with the aurora now it's just a, again like the pice it's just a floating coffin right so the alpha would sorry i apologize so this mustang is it would be the mustang delta right and then uh and then you want the alpha and then you want the beta and all that stuff right so uh, this image should be a mustang delta it should be green right but it, this would be the mustang delta you know uh, and then you have the Reliant Tana. <laughs> I'm okay. I'm okay. Uh, seven for threat, which means it has six size two guns. I mean, if you put the little turrets on it, it's pretty good. Uh, basically made of paper, no control, physically large. Low acceleration, low top speed. <laughs> so, D tier. Have fun with it. Now, we move up to C tier. Yay, C tier. Crap tier. So, ladies and gentlemen, it breaks my heart to say that the Anvil Arrow is in C tier. My favorite fighter. Reduced to trash! Trash, I tell you. <laughs> you know, five for threat because it has a couple guns on it. Two size threes, two size ones, so it can shoot stuff. It requires a relatively trained pilot in the sense that you can't be an absolute rookie in the arrow. Um, you got to have some basic training, you know. Um, so I would, you know, it's uh, yellow for, for skill. Uh, don't forget, orange is more, more difficult. So it goes, you know, green, yellow, orange, red. Um, low hit points. You know, the only thing saving the arrow the is the fact that it has, you know, the only thing only saving the arrow is the fact that it's physically quite small, but with the low top speed and low acceleration and low if hit points, you, you know, it's, it's absolute food for ships that are in higher Maybe categories honored, right you then you finish. have the um saber which is basically just a slightly fatter slightly less armored slightly less hard like you know more difficult to target uh arrow um so you know it's a little more threatening because it has four size threes so you, you know you got to be paying attention if, if a saber gets behind you starts shooting at you you can't ignore it um but again relatively low turn rates kind of bad hit points easy to kill heart like it, it can't get away it's just you know and then <laughs> people are gonna get so mad at me but it's true man it's true and I'll, i bet you any money some people would actually argue that it's lower but the anvil f8 lightning Whew. now this thing is a 10 on threat which means if you get in front of it it will kill you it's got eight guns they ha you have to respect the eight guns on the F-8 Lightning. If you don't respect the eight guns on the F-8 Lightning, you will find yourself floating home. Okay? So you must respect the eight guns on the F-8 Lightning. However, 
Notice how its TCS score is three for control, which means low acceleration, low turn rate, low negotiation ability, which means in a dogfight, it has trouble, extremely has trouble, trying to find a position where it can actually engage and apply the damage that it's using. And then it has a nine for survivability because it's just tough as nails and takes forever to kill. But because its control is basically zero, um, it's it's in C tier because it's got it's just it's it, it it's 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 just <laughs> oh it's a capital ship it's a capital ship that's what it is okay uh, and the Vanguard is basically like a shitty version of the F8 Lightning uh, you know it's definitely dangerous it's nine out of ten on threat which means if you get within this weapons range and its nose is on you. You must respect the Vanguard, but if you if you just turn around it, <laughs> well, it's not got that many hit points, and it's not got any acceleration, top speed, or G forces to maintain or control any kind of fighting, and so ultimately it just gets outrated and murdered. Um, it does have a turret, you know, to help, uh, you know, shoot the tail shooters, but. Again, it's not a very threatening turret. If you're flying the Vanguard Sentinel, that's out of the family of, of Vanguard ships, the Sentinel would be the most important one to use for combat because it has the EMP. So at least you have a little bit of flexibility um, with the EMP in a fight. Um, maybe your turret gunner can apply some damage and then pop the EMP. Um, I put this ship as easy to use because there's really not much you can do. In the, in the Vanguard, it's not like it requires a good pilot. You just turn your nose onto them, pull the trigger, and there you go. If you can't get the nose on, well, sorry. I mean, fly a different ship. Because there's the speeds are so low. Like, If the ship's speeds were higher, it would require a better pilot to be able to manage the merging. But, I mean, the Vanguard is just a... Well. I'm not going to be selling many Vanguards after this video. <laughs> And then we have the Hawk, which again, requires a more trained pilot. So, you know, be aware of how the Hawk systems work. Be aware of EMPs, be aware of, um, you know, the physical profile. The thing is the Hawk is not really that threatening, even with its EMP, because it's only size two, at least for now in 323. Um, it's six guns aren't super threatening. They're size twos and size ones. The, the weapons have been totally rebalanced for 323. So larger weapons are much more damaging. So it's got a lot of small guns. It's it's sort of threatening. You know, it can kind of move around, but it's got low survivability. I put it three out of 10 on survivability because anything hits it, it loses a wing, it loses a half a thruster, and then that's it, game over, right? Uh, especially if you're in atmosphere, like you're toast, like you're absolutely toast. Uh, then we have the Vandal Glaive, which um, some people might be actually a little bit surprised with. But the Vandal Glaive, um, again, eight out of ten on threat, so it's it's pretty threatening. You know, it's not as threatening as an F8 Lightning, but it's you have to respect its two size five guns. So you have to be careful because uh, they will they will kill you. <laughs> uh, and then it's got five for control because its turn rate's really low. It's physically large. It's not really able to negotiate during a combat engagement very well. Um, you know, uh, but definitely a little bit better than a Vanguard does. Uh, and then five for survivability because it doesn't take that many hit points to kill it. It's really not that, you know, maneuverable. So it's just, you know, it is what it is. Um, and again, blade. Ironically enough, I was quite surprised with how bad the blade was. <laughs> the blade was a like I couldn't believe it. I was like, wow, this thing went from like legitimately an A tier fighter in the previous model to being useless almost completely useless in this mode just easy to kill low hit points it's cannons eh, you know like they're threatening but they're not threatening as threatening as something like uh you know i mean and a lot of these other ships in c tier so definitely a lot of work to be done on the blade that's for sure right okay moving up to b tier now people are gonna get <laughs> oh they're gonna get mad Okay, so B tier. So. <laughs> now, before anyone freaks out, okay? We've done a lot of testing, okay? I know people say, oh, the Anvil Mark II is super OP, blah, 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 but, but Avenger, what? 
I think I've proven many times over that the Mark II Hornet, as beautiful as it is, I mean, don't get me wrong, it's my favorite looking ship. But the problem is the Mark II Hornet's speed, top speed, acceleration, uh, is just not there. So its level of control during a fight is very low. Notice how its TCS score is five, okay? That means it has about the same control over the fight as the arrow does, right? And what I mean by control is, again, turn rates, um, accelerations, top speed limits, all that stuff. It really lends itself to like what ships are able to be in control of fights. Um, and the Hornet is not in control. The, I mean, a Hornet, if it stays together, is a very threat. Again, nine out of 10 for threat. So if you get in front of a Hornet, you have to respect the DPS that the Hornet can push out. You know, those, those, um, you know, those, uh, those guns are a serious, that's a serious amount of firepower, you know, especially two, you know, two size fours and four size threes. I mean, if you get in front of that thing, you have to respect it, but you know, it, it doesn't have a lot of control and it's pretty tough. So it's a B tier fighter. So in the hands of a okay, you know, DPS turn, right? So, uh, it doesn't require a significantly skilled pilot to get the most out of the Mark II Hornet. So it's definitely an easy ship to get into and just plank some stuff and be like, cool. So then we have the Fury, which, uh, again, it's a 6 out of 10 on threat. Not really that threatening. Requires a trained pilot to use. Like, don't walk into a Fury day one. Like, have a little bit of awareness with it. Um, and it's got a 6 for control because it's got a little bit more acceleration. It's a bit smaller. It's much much higher turn rate. So we can actually get in there and manage the fight in some way. Um, nothing great, but it's like, you know, it is what it is. Uh, then you got the Gladius, and the Gladius, again, five for threat, not really great on guns, six for control, and three for survivability, because, dude, this thing dies so fast. <laughs> like, you get behind a Gladius, just bang, 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 done. Totally done, right? And then we have the Mark I Hornets, right? So we have the Hornet family, again, I have the whole Hornet family there on the top, as you can see, okay? So starting with the F7C, Ghost would be the number one out of the family of Ghost Hornets or the family of F7Cs uh, to use, the originals, the Mark Ones. Um, the Ghost would probably be your best bet just because it's got a better signature and it's got identical stats to almost every, and everything else. But again, eight for threat, so it's a little bit less threatening than the Mark II. It's got the same amount of control as the Mark II, but it's uh, it's got less hit points. Like the Mark I dies way faster than the Mark II. It's amazing actually the difference. The Mark II is significantly tougher than the Mark I. Um, so use the Ghost Hornet and then everything else is just variations of not as good, right? And then you have the Scorpius. This is the only ship with interceptor tuning that didn't make it uh, like into the better into the better categories. It's amazing to me that the Scorpius, like when I tested it out and flew it around like crazy, it has a good amount of control. So it's got an 8 out of 10 on control and it's got a decent amount of, uh, of firepower. But the problem with the Scorpius is it dies super quick, you know, and because it's physically very large, it's quite easy to hit it from long range, even if it's on its way out with lots of acceleration, right? Um, so what I found with Scorpius is, is they are good. You know, they're still the viable choice in combat. You know, B tier and up is probably what you want to use for combat. Um, but you got to be aware. And I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't say that the Scorpius requires a significantly great pilot because there's not really much you can do with it. I mean, you're either getting in close and shooting and let your turret gunner do the work, um, or you're using your afterburner and leaving the fight. So it's either one or the other. There's not a lot of geometry in the fight that you have to worry about with the Scorpius because you don't really have turns, you know? So that brings us to the Banu or Banana Defender. Um, the Banana Defender... The Banana Defender is... How do I put it this way? Mildly. Um, it's like uh, It's like when you go to the supermarket, you know? And there's like a piece of meat on sale, but it's been expired for like 12 hours. And you kind of look at it and go like, I'm not sure if I should buy this or if I should eat this. But you think like, ah, well, if I cook it, it'll probably turn out pretty good. It's kind of like that. That's the kind of feeling the Banner Defender gives you. You know, it's just kind of like you're in it. You're like, I don't know if I should do this, but it's like, mm, okay, you know, and it kind of tastes good when you cook it, but you can't can't help but feel 
Like, maybe you're gonna get salmonella after this or some shit. <laughs> you know, that's kinda... It's <laughs> kinda the best way I can explain it. Six for threat, four size, three guns. I mean, it, it does hit stuff, and it hits them pretty hard, and the... The Banu Tachyon guns are okay, you know? Um, they're, they're okay now. They used to be ridiculously OP. Um, five for control, because it has an okay turn rate. You know, it, again, it, everything about the ship is kind of like, eh, like it's, it's okay. It's not terrible, but it's not great. Uh, and five for survivability. Oh boy, this thing dies quickly. You know, I mean, you shoot the, the wings off this thing super fast. It's physically very large, very easy to hit. Doesn't really have a lot of acceleration, so it's quite easy to third party. It's just like, pff, easy. Which brings us to the Starfish, the Patrick Mobile. Now, I put this as red for it requires a skilled pilot like you must be skilled like in, in my opinion you must be an expert to get the ship to perform at a b tier level okay it's got low survivability high threat seven out of ten right so it's got two size fours which do a, de a decent amount of, like you have to respect those guns they do a lot of damage you know um six for control so it's got a pretty good amount of control in the fight uh and right now they're they're hard to hit you know if you got a good pilot if you're not a good pilot you're easy to hit and you just get smoked right so that's why i put it is if you have to fly the card to wall you've got to be experienced you've got to be an expert otherwise you're not going to get the most out of this platform um it's got a pretty high turn rate um so if you're rate limiting people it requires a, a decent amount of flight skill um so it's not an entry level ship definitely a ship that's going to be more for the experienced pilots um because it's not it's not very survivable, you know. But if you can master the cartoon wall, you can get some results from it. Yeah, it's not too bad, um, but definitely not as good as some of the A and S tier ships. And then we have the Talon. The Talon, um, in my opinion, out of all the ships in B tier, it would be the only fighter that I would fly. The Talon is actually quite tough. Like I'm actually quite surprised with how tough it actually is. It's got two size four, so it's quite threatening. It can do a decent amount of damage and it's got an okay amount of control you know it's not as good as any interceptors it can't it can't string people out it can't pull it can't negotiate it just can't right um but in terms of its profile and how, how it responds from my experience flying it and fighting them i'd say that they're pretty much in b tier so not a terrible ship i mean if the talon had higher top speed it would genuinely be an a and s tier fighter like overnight right a lot of this comes down to the ship's top speed right Okay, now we go into A tier. Now, this is where people are going to get really upset. <laughs> but, 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 but Avenger, the 125 days rookie ship, that's not beating my F8 Lightning. Oh. Hold on, hold on, okay? Now, listen and listen to me very closely. I want you guys to pay attention to the amount of skill required to operate these, like, these vessels on... A competency level so a lot of reds out there right because a lot of the higher skill ceiling meta ships are locked behind people that that you require a decent amount of skill and training to get the most out of them right and so what ends up happening is if you'll notice that the best of the ships like if you were to look at so whatever your skill level is let's say you were a green skill level right the best green ship that you could fly is the mark ii hornet so if you weren't a good pilot, you're not going to get a 125A performing at an A and S tier level. Like it just will, will not happen, right? But that doesn't mean that because you can't fly the ship at an A and S tier level, that the ship cannot perform there in somebody else's hands. Just because you can't fly, an F, like if you can't drive like Max Verstappen, doesn't mean that his Red Bull Honda isn't capable of putting in world record times, right? And that's what people need to wrap their head around is that's why I place the skill diamonds on those tops, right? Um, because it requires an expert pilot to get the most out of a system like the 125A. But here's the here's the catcher. Five out of ten for threat, so it's got two size three guns. You know, it's not it's not like, oh my god, I'm getting hit by an FA Lightning, but it's a decent threat. Two size threes can hit pretty hard, especially if you work in a team. It's you have to respect those two size threes nine for control okay nine for control well why is it nine out of ten avenger well i'll tell you why because good accelerations extremely high turn rates so you can force people into turn rates without actually receiving damage and high top speeds high after murder good boost 
So, the amount of control that you can exert onto a fight with the 125A is hilariously good. And no, this is not satire. This is legitimately what's going on. Like, these are the ships that are winning at the top levels. This is not a skit. I'm telling you, these, these are the metas. <laughs> That's what people are like, oh, there's no way. I'm, I'm telling you, man, this is what's going on. Right? Uh, then we have the one, the 325A, you know, which is, uh, you know, a little bit more threatening. 7 out of 10, a size 4 and 2 size 3 fixed. You know, you have 8 uh, for control because it's got a little bit less acceleration, physically larger, you know, um, than the 125A counterpart, but it's still quite good. Very high top speeds, again, interceptor tuning. And then 6 for, for survivability because, you know, it's... Uh, it's uh, it's pretty brittle, so you got to be careful. Like you can get hit and die pretty quickly, uh, so you got to be careful. Um, but you've got two size one shields, just like the Gladius and all that other stuff, right? Uh, then you have the Aegis Avenger uh, Warlock. Again, we go based on the ship family, not you know. So in the 125A's case, the 125A is the best one. All the other ones are variations of not as good as the 125A. The 325A is the best out of the 300 series, and the Aegis Avenger Warlock is the best out of the Avenger Titan series um, because it has the size 4 EMP, which is a significantly powerful EMP. Um, so all you need is a couple shots on target, pop the EMP, and boom, you've turned off your enemy. You've got interceptor tuning. You're very quick. You're relatively quite small in terms of profile. You've got good amount of G-forces. You've got good turn rate compared to other interceptors. Like, it's genuinely genuinely a good fighter which is actually quite hilarious considering it has an eternal bay you can walk around and put stuff in it <laughs> like you know and i'll take an avenger titan over an fa lightning any day right and i can prove that over and over and over and over again um that a group of titans could easily kill a group of fa lightnings not a problem uh so then we have but again notice that the pilot skill required to reach that level of performance is red. You have to be an expert to reach that level of performance, right? Um, then we have the Archimedes, which in my personal favorite is, you know, uh, I, I I like it the most. It's my personal favorite. Um, you know, in, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's not really threatening. It's three out of 10. It's got four little size one guns. They don't do a ton of damage. It's like, ooh, I'm getting shot at, but it's got 10 for control because it's got 650 meters per second. It's got the most speed of any ship by a lot. A lot of acceleration. It's the size of a peanut. It's super small, super fast, super maneuverable, and it's got, you know, uh, it's got a shield system, just like uh, the arrow. So in terms of combat ships, um, a, a pack of Archimedes is, is, is no joke. You know, we've tested this many times and I'll continue to put out videos and show people um, because even though people are like, oh, that's not possible. Like when I fly the Archimedes, I die right away. Yeah. Okay. Well, it, again, look at the skill diamond. <laughs> it requires an expert pilot to get the most out of, but if you're an expert pilot, I'm telling you the amount you can get out of an Archimedes is, is, is insane. It really is insane. Um, so, you know, nine for survivability. Cause it just, it's so bloody hard to hit. It's so hard to lock it down. You know, it's so hard to hit it. I mean, it's tiny little profile. If you're doing it right, like good luck. I mean, good luck trying to hit it, you know? Uh, then we have the uh, Aegis Saber Raven. Yes, the EMPs are good, right? But the reason why the Saber Raven is up here over top of its brother, the Saber, down there in C tier, is because the Saber Raven has significantly higher speeds. It's interceptor tuned, okay? So it has two size three guns, just like the 125A, a decent top speed, physically thin profile. It's very thin, so when it's facing you, it's very hard to hit. You know, it's... Um, like it's just it's a good fighter it's th it's a way better saber than the saber is you know and with the emps you're able to knock people's shields out and turn them off um you know and give you that extra little bit of pressure so if you can get close but again look at the skill up there right it does require uh an experienced pilot not an expert slash ace it requires an experienced pilot you're not a beginner and you're not a trainee like you've got to have a little bit of time in the seat to get the most out of something like the saber raven because if you um, if you're coming in there, you know guns ablaze and not really understanding how to do basic you know merges or basic corkscrews, yeah, you're gonna get smoked, right? But it is what it is. Uh, then we have the uh, rumored 
Firebird, which is the brother to the Raven. Um, not like I would know about this ship. I'm just saying, if there was ever a ship to be built if you would join us. that happened to be called the Firebird, I mean... <laughs> I mean, if I happen to know what the stats are, I would assume, you know... That it would be 677, seven, which would be 6 for threat. Same weapons load as the uh, the Raven. Uh, uh, I definitely have a lot more missiles with the Firebird. Not like I would know that or anything. I'm just assuming. Um, and then 7 for survivability. And again, control, 7. So it's got good control. It's not insanely control. It's not sitting up there with, uh, with the Archimedes for a amount of control. But um, she feels great when I fly it, though. So then we have the Mantis. Now, the Mantis... Oh boy, the Mantis is a real... This is something that some people are going to probably disagree with, but it is the truth. Um, the thing with the Mantis is it's the interdictor of the of the game. I mean, it's got the snare, it's got the dampener, it's, it's what you need for piracy, combat, to keep people out of nav mode, you know. Um, the reality with uh, a Mantis pilot is just like in EVE Online, the interdictor will die. <laughs> Um, you know, it, it, you are public enemy number one. You are the one that's holding, forcing people to stay in a fight that they don't want to be in. You are going to be public enemy number one. So you're going to get all the missiles, all the attention, all the hate. You're it. And the Mantis, right? Now, the Mantis has 600 top speed. It's interceptor tuned. It's relatively quite small. It's a little bit better than it was in live. Um, it's got two size three guns, so it doesn't do a tremendous amount of damage. And then it's got its um, snare and dampener systems. Uh, I wouldn't require—I wouldn't say that you require, you know, to be an expert pilot to get the Mantis working properly. However, you have to be trained uh, because it is relatively flag uh, fragile, fragile. But due to its relatively small size, um, decent acceleration, and high top speed. The Mantis is, uh, in my opinion, a genuinely effective platform and, and absolutely needs to be part of any group of PvP players or pirates. End of story. Including anti-piracy you know, anti operations or bounty hunting. You need a Mantis with you, right? So pray, pray, thank God that this thing is interceptor tuned. Uh, and then we have, to round up our A tier list, the MISC, or I guess the Mirai Razor, right? So... Mirai Razor, very small, two size, two guns, not really that threatening. It's got a four out of 10, so it's a little bit more like, ooh, it's, it can damage you. Um, it's got a nine on um, its control because it's so tiny, so fast, good turn rate. I mean, it's a racing ship that can fight. I mean, it's it's a fighter, you know? Uh, and then it's got six for survivability. So it's very brittle, you know? Uh, large signature. I find a lot of times missiles like to stick to the razor more than other ships we would be um so definitely if you would join us you know definitely a definitely a great system and a great platform uh lots of control lots of flexibility lots of options during a combat fight but uh not s tier right all right now that leads us to that leads us to s tier guys so Here we have S tier, okay? Now you'll notice that there's two ships up there, okay? One being the Buccaneer and one being the M50. Now you might ask yourself, why Avenger, why? Why have you chosen the M50? Well, I'll tell you why. It's got two size two guns. It's got nine out of 10 for her controllability because it's got insanely high acceleration. It's got uh, very high top speeds. It's got two shields. You know, it's very hard to hit. In a group of M50s, they absolutely slay people. But again, they don't have a tremendous amount of firepower. But it doesn't matter because you can get up people, you can outrate them. And again, notice that the skill diamond is red, which means you must be an expert. Okay? You must be an expert to be able to fly the M50 at the level of S tier. It just, it has to be that way, right? If you are not an expert and you fly the M50, there's a good chance you're going to die and be like, well, A1, this 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 tier list is bullshit, right? And that's fine. This is just my opinion. But this is what I've been seeing. This is what the testing that we've been doing has been giving us. 
this is what, in my opinion, is really what's going on. And again, we've, we've shown videos and tried to prove this over and over again. And I'll continue to do videos and show people like this is, you know, this is where the ships are sitting. Um, and then we also have the Buccaneer, which again, the, you know, the Buccaneer went from being in the previous flight model. The Buccaneer was, oh boy, it was like, the Buccaneer in the previous model was, I can't remember what it was. It was like D tier. It was terrible, you know, and I bagged, ragged on the Buccaneer for like weeks, months, years, hated it. Just hated the Buccaneer, constantly bagged on it, you know? That's why I set the Buccaneer, uh, you know, fly, you know, fly Buccaneer for 50,000, like, stream credits, because I, I hated flying it. It was just an easy way to get me killed. Uh, and so I just was not interested in flying it. And now, and now the Buccaneer is the number one, right? Um, it is the best ship, and it doesn't require, uh, you know, a, a super trained pilot to get the most out of it. Um, you know, in my opinion, uh, I'll have to change this, but it should be trained, not rookie. Um, so you need to be a trained pilot to get the most out of the Buccaneer. Um, but if you respect the Buccaneer, understand how she works. Um, it's, it's S tier. I mean, especially in groups, uh, Buccaneers in groups are really, really powerful, like really powerful. I'm at, you know, eight out of 10 on threat. Cause it's got five guns. Size four, two size threes, two size ones. It's a it's a it's a really powerful ship platform. Super fast, super small, um, you know, relatively survivable. I've taken a lot of hits in the Buccaneer and, and come out on the other side and survived. So, you know, I mean, it's not like it's unkillable, but again, you know, definitely a definitely an S tier fighter, definitely. And then again, the M50. So there you have it, guys. That's. That's the tier list, and remember, this is for combat fighters, size, you know, uh, you know, single or dual seat fighters. I'm not doing the Connie's Corsairs, all these other ships yet. I'm going to do another tier list um, because they're kind of on their own category. Um, okay, so let me explain the one v one versus the th thing here. Um, we're kind of encompassing a lot of things together, right? So. In a duel, yeah, the Buccaneer is going to have a hard time. But again, right, It's it can just disengage that fight. There's no way that if a Hornet shows up and fights a Buccaneer, if that Buccaneer doesn't want to die, he's not going to. It's that simple, right? Um, so, you know, people say like, well, well, in this one situation where I can't run away and I have to fight to my enemy's exact strengths, it's like, okay. and And even then... The Buccaneer, if it's in the hands of a trained pilot, is still able to win duels against some of these bigger ships. I mean, I've won duels against, um, you know, uh, enemy Hornets and all that stuff, too, uh, that are really good Hornet pilots. Um, it just depends on how good you are with the with the Buccaneer, right? You know, so <laughs> there's going to be a lot of debate about this, but remember... The reason I put the skill diamonds in there is because I think the majority of the Star Citizen player base um, is sitting in the rookie level, right? And so if you are a rookie, so yellow, so if, you're, if your diamond skill level is yellow, uh, then the best ship that you're going to get the bang for your buck with will be the Mark II Hornet and the Fury and the Talon. Those are the three ships, right? As you become a better pilot, as you become a trained, experienced pilot, your your tag turns to orange. This unlocks ships like the Raven, the Firebird, um, the Mantis, uh, and the Buccaneer, right? Because once you're trained, you're going to be able to utilize those platforms to a higher level. Um, and then when you become an expert, then you fly the 125A, the 325, the Adventure Titan, the Archimedes, uh, the Razor, and the M50. Because at that point, you've got all your basics down. You know how to fly. You know how to switch into modes really quickly. You know what geometry looks like in a fight. Um, like, you know these things. And the important part is um, if to get the most out of the platform... Um, you need to be at that skill level, right? So for the majority of the play, like the player audience, they're going to want to stick to the Hornet, the, you know, the, um, the Fury, the Gladius, like a lot of ships here in B tier. Uh, and they're going to want to stay away from the Cartwall, you know, 
because a new player flying a card to wall is not not good right so so be honest with yourself and tell yourself like hmm where am i on this skill diamond right am i an expert am i trained am i a rookie am i a beginner because you'll notice that if you're an expert and you're in an m50 you're going to be winning a lot of fights uh and especially if you get into team fights um you know if you get into uh multi-gang situations which is what happens in the persistent universe there's not a lot of dueling that goes on in the universe um because unless you're dueling a mantis there's no reason for you to stick around and take that fight so that's the tier list guys i hope you uh, understand uh, tell me what you guys think because um do you like the skill diamonds to help contextualize the ships do you like that i put a tcs score in so that you can better kind of understand like you know so let's say you like i want a ship um you know i'm a beginner pilot i want the ship that does the most damage for the beginner pilot well you want to fly you know in terms of the best ship i want to be b tier i want to fly either the scorpius because it's a nine or a mark two hornet so if i wanted if i want to be very threatening i want to have that ship or that ship let reddit burn my friends <laughs> let reddit burn baby let them burn